Have you ever wondered how much power the queen actually had? Type this question into Google and you'll read that, oh, the royal family is just a ceremonial position. It's just for tradition. They don't have any actual power. They just do a bunch of ribbon cutting. When in reality, that is just what they want you to think. See, while they distract you with, oh, look at how this sweet old lady smiles and waves. Look at how pretty the princess is. Let's watch her wedding. While you were distracted with all of that, the queen and the royal family actually have an insane amount of power and an unimaginable amount of wealth. She could veto and change any law she pleased. She could bomb nations. She could literally get away with murder, not an exaggeration. She had enough money and power to make any supervillain drool from the mouth. Even Donald Trump looks scared of her. But you'll never hear about any of this because the royal family is smart. They keep all of this on the down low. They make sure the public really does believe that it's all ceremonial. Why? Because these people don't pay taxes. They spend their $20 million a year allowance on vacations and home renovations. They accept bribes in exchange for favors. They can literally get away with murder. So of course they want you to think it's just a ceremonial position. These people are immune above the law and they want to keep it that way. And now King Charles III has taken her throne along with all that sweet power. So the question remains, how much power do they really have? Stay dangerous and let's get into it. If you want to be super successful, you gotta look at what the most successful people are doing, like Zuckerberg and Steve Jobs, who wear the same outfit every single day to cut down on the number of decisions they have to make. They do this and I do this because it works. You just have to find clothes you feel great wearing every single day. And luckily, that is where Vessi comes in. Vessi makes these super light, breathable, 100% waterproof shoes, and I absolutely love them because these shoes can take on anything while looking good. I tortured the last pair I had with music festivals, traveling, dirt, rain, mud for like two years straight, and they were still going strong. What I love about them is that they can take all of this abuse while being super versatile. I can wear them to the gym when I meet new people when I'm out and about and traveling in the summer or winter. Since they're super stretchy, you can slip them on and off super easily, and there's free shipping, returns, and exchanges. So if you want some of the most versatile shoes out there, Vessi is giving you guys $25 off when you go to Vessi.com slash JakeTran and use code JakeTran at checkout. So pause the video and go to Vessi.com slash JakeTran with code JakeTran for $25 off now. Thanks to Vessi for sponsoring this video. Every queen or king of England will enjoy what we call sovereign immunity. This basically means that they have a forever get out of jail free card, meaning they're immune to all types of criminal charges, including, yes, murder. Other members of the monarchy are only immune from civil proceedings. You know, minor things like getting sued, issues with the landlord, contract breaches, but they are still able to be charged in criminal cases. Not the queen. She is the personification of the crown. And when you go on trial in a commonwealth country, you are defending yourself against the crown, aka the queen. If the queen was ever put on trial, she would just be going up against herself. And that wouldn't make any sense now, would it? To top this off, the queen also has diplomatic immunity which means she cannot be charged under the laws of a country outside of the Commonwealth either. She was basically a free agent in this crazy game of life, and if she wants to drop a bomb on your house, she can do it and suffer no consequences. To further add to the mayhem, she can kill or arrange to have someone killed and never have to share any information about it or who was involved because of her legal exemption from information requests. Now that is a lot of power. So the queen has a permanent get out of jail free card, but what other powers does she wield? You may not be aware of this, but before a new law can even be discussed in parliament, the queen or prince of Wales needs to give consent first. The queen's consent, which requires she give her consent before any law that affects the interests of the monarchy can even be discussed at all in parliament. So unless they think it's a good idea, it's not even going to be talked about. They also have the power to veto any bill that they don't really like. Enter the Whitehall Papers. A list of 39 bills released in 2012 that were either vetoed or revised by the Queen or Prince. It included bills like the 1996 Housing Act, the 2004 Higher Education Act, and the 1999 Military Actions Against Iraq Bill. In the UK, military strikes on Iraq had to be authorized by the monarch, not the parliament. 
and this bill was trying to change that. Needless to say, the queen vetoed it right away. It seems she wanted to keep this power to drop the bombs herself, save it for a rainy day, right? It turns out that many of the bills listed in the Whitehall papers that the queen vetoed or had a heavy hand in were all related to either her personal wealth or the wealth of the extended monarchy, because nothing gets between the queen and her private purse. Money and power go together like, uh, crumpets and jam, and the royal family just can't seem to get enough. The crown currently owns one-sixth of the Earth's landmass, and when we put the valuation of all the monarchy's combined assets together, crown jewels included, we get to an estimated total of $88 billion. Most of this money is inherited, and gets passed on from one royal to the next completely tax-free by the way. Just another medieval law that they're still benefiting from. The rest of the money comes from income gathered from the Crown Estate, which is land in the UK that the family personally owns. Government grants, aka money from the British taxpayers, and another kind of shady source which we're going to save for later in the video. Every year, the royal family receives a grant from the government to use at their own will, as long as it generally supports the service of the Queen. This can include anything from garden parties to vacations. So basically, British citizens pay the royal family an allowance that they can use for almost whatever they please. In 2012, the annual grant was the equivalent of $36 million US, and in 2018, it went up to $96 million. Imagine if you got nearly $100 million a year as an allowance. Why are they getting so much free money from the people? Well, this grant was actually negotiated a couple centuries ago by King George III. He hatched a deal where he will give all the profits from his crown land to the government in perpetuity, in exchange for a yearly salary that will support his lifestyle and the relief of all of his current debt, which he seemed to have a lot of. So, the ownership of the crown land was passed over to the UK government, but you know what's coming. Over the last century, different royals, including Prince Charles, have done everything they can to get the profits from the crown estate back into their own pockets, and it wasn't until a man named George Osborne became Chancellor that the Prince's request was finally put through. Just like that. Now, the royal family gets 25% of the profits from the Crown Estate. That's $144 million a year now going to the royal family instead of the British people, while they still get that yearly allowance. Harry and Meghan have also had their greedy moments. When they made the decision to move out of Kensington Palace and into a nearby cottage, $3.4 million was requested from the government to pay for the renovations before they moved in. So the British people are putting in all this work, paying their taxes, so these two can renovate a cottage while acting like they're the real victims. Well played. There have been tons of cases where the monarchy squeezed the taxpayer where it already hurts. But there's another way the royals monetize on their status that's a little more… under the table. This is Prince Charles. He's not the most popular royal, but foreign businessmen love him. In February of this year, Prince Charles was accused of accepting a $1.7 million donation to his charity from a Saudi Arabian billionaire in exchange for a knighthood which would translate to UK citizenship. So a Saudi Arabian billionaire basically bribed him $1.7 million in exchange for citizenship. When the prince was questioned by the media on what he had done, he gave the same response all guilty royals give. Quote, the prince had no knowledge of the alleged offer of honours or British citizenship on the basis of donation to his charities." End quote. Kind of reminds me of someone else I know. I have no recollection of ever meeting this lady. To cover himself, the prince launched a formal investigation of his charity by his company The Prince's Foundation, and found that his longtime assistant and friend Michael Fawcett was the one who coordinated the transaction. Now. The prince is being brought in as a witness in a crime that he almost definitely committed himself. Uh, whenever Prince Charles is cornered on something, someone else falls on their sword. Prince Charles has also sold seats at royal lunches. One Turkish billionaire paid Prince Charles $230,000, processed through his charity to avoid tax of course, so that his wife could sit next to him at a dinner party. So if you see someone sitting next to a royal, they might not be all that important. 
just someone who knows how to legally bribe them. Up until 1973, Prince Charles received a hundred silver shillings and a pound of peppercorns, like the literal pepper seasoning, from the mayor of Launceston every year because it was a law that was placed centuries ago. Does he need a pound of peppercorns? Probably not, but you'll notice that the royal family seems overly obsessed with holding on to tradition, in the way they dress, the way they talk, the way they sip their tea, and it's all because they're clinging on to the power and wealth that was randomly bestowed onto them over a thousand years ago. If they don't, if they become too modern, they might inspire a reform in the monarchy, and that would mean less power and less money. And I'm sure you're wondering, if the queen has all this power, why didn't she go full-on tyrant? Why didn't she rule with an iron fist? Well, because times have changed. Optics matter. If the royal family wants to maintain all their priceless perks, they can't rock the boat. They need to keep their image spotless. They need to voluntarily pay some taxes. Because if they didn't, the masses would start seeing them as a ticking time bomb. They would revolt, and that would be really bad news for the monarchy. So instead, the queen worked quietly behind the scenes, doing everything she could to make sure the public was okay with keeping her family at the top of the hierarchy. This woman had the power to fire any prime minister, drop a bomb on any country, release any prisoner from jail, kill any man without consequence, and dissolve an entire parliament if she really wanted to. And now, all of that power has been passed on to this guy. And you'd better believe he will do whatever it takes to keep his family in power. And while Prince Charles does his dirty work behind the scenes, his brother Andrew continues to cover up his friendship with our sex trafficking golden boy, Efri Jepstein. Besides Prince Andrew, many powerful men have had evidence leaked of their connection to Epstein, including Donald Trump, Bill Clinton, and one of Epstein's most loyal clients, Les Wexner, the CEO of Victoria's Secret. What would a billionaire sex trafficker want with a company that employs beautiful, fit, teenage lingerie models? Well, lots of things. But these things are way too risque to reveal in a normal video. We would get demonetized almost instantly. Which is why we decided to release all of this information as a private, uncensored, full-length documentary only available to members of this channel. All you have to do to get instant access to the Victoria's Secret Epstein connection and tons of other secret docs on topics like Monsanto, MKUltra, and CIA black sites is to click the join button below. And unlike university, we are not going to charge you thousands of dollars only to leave you in the dark about how the world really works. All it takes is $5 a month to learn what they'll never teach you in school. And there's a refund policy too, unlike most YouTube memberships. So if you're not happy with the membership, just email us within your first month of joining and we will refund your $5 right away, no questions asked. After your first month, there is no refund. Wouldn't it be nice to be considered royalty and get a giant allowance and not pay taxes? I sure would enjoy that. But what do you guys think about the queen and the royal family? Do you like them? Are you fans? Do you think they're outdated? Let me know in the comments below. And if you're new here, this is one of the biggest channels on YouTube for documentaries on money, power, war, and crime. Just like this video where we teach you how the world really works. So if you enjoyed this one, click that subscribe button below. You can follow me on Instagram at Jake Chan, but that's going to wrap it up. Stay dangerous out there and I will see you guys in the next one.